Hi, welcome back to another episode of Painting with Friends. As usual, I'm Vaz Hayes, and today I have an important guest, an award-winning poet, Indo Indigo Green. Welcome to the show. Yo, thank you, thank you. It is an honor to be here. Is this your first interview? This is my first interview. We are making a lot of firsts this year. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. So we're going to get started. Um, as usual, with Painting with Friends, this is how it goes. Skeezers in here, he said meowdy. Um, mm -hmm whatever that means but anyway um this is how the show works we have a bunch of paintbrushes ready at the ready you got pencils we are using watercolors today and we're just going to be painting and doing some slight drawing and going from there as we do this interview all right to introduce indigo a little bit more he is an award-winning poet winner of the naacp axo bronze award yes sir very tough feat very tough feat to accomplish and recent graduate and student of GMU? Like you yes. recently got it um, into GMU? I, yeah, I recently, I'm now attending George Mason University and I graduated from Colgan High School. Colgan High School. The legendary arts program. Um, I, need to, I need to ask you some questions about that once we get there. Okay. But yeah, keep doing your introduction. Yeah. Uh, high school was amazing. Gave wow. me this platform, so prepared me for all this work. So we'll get into that more. <laughs> okay, perfect. And can I borrow the white? Thank you, sir. All right. Um. So first thing, let's touch on the amazing feat of you getting into the magazine based off your award in poetry. Mm -hmm. What was it that you submitted that won you the bronze medal? Okay. Or was it various submissions? I submitted one single poem. One single poem. One single poem. Did it float that many rounds? <laughs> that it, it was one single poem that floated that many rounds from the PWC Axe Award to the NAACP one? Yes. So one poem took you that far. One poem. <laughs> that is crazy. Um, the poem was called I Am Strange Fruit. It's I actually in like... Fruit. Um, I think... The article mentions me like working on publishing uh -huh. and that is now official uh, i have a little chat book out called stare pigmentation i was looking and at that in in that uh in that book um i am strange true is one of the more notable poems and that just talks about like comparing like lynching and pastime yeah Comparing that to like modern day police brutality and uh, kind of just writing like not a love letter, but like kind of like sympathizing with all of the timelines from old history to current events. I can see how you were capable of winning <laughs> an NAACP award. Thank you, Herb. Based off just that alone and that yeah. subject matter. Do you remember any of the lines from it or from the poem? Maybe you could reiterate some of it. I am strange fruit, the cop car's cargo. From lucky ship me off to a foreign land where I'll rarely see a man the color of the inside of my hand that's dipped in tan. And if I'm not, take your best shot and leave me to bleed in the same street where my legends marched in footsteps to fight for the air in my lungs to continue to circulate throughout my body helping me live through each breath i take i got tears and like i'm tearing up that's powerful that is powerful yeah. how did you come up with that oh god <sighs> how did you come <laughs> up with something that that's that's powerful so the first, like, the first even thought of the poem mm -hmm. was uh, inspired by the Billie Holiday movie that came out. I think it's uh, Billie Holiday versus United States or yeah. somewhere along those lines. That was the one that came out on Netflix, right? Uh, Hulu. Hulu. It was on Hulu. That's right. And when I watched that, I was like, yo, this was like kind of like my first introduction to that song, for real. And fruit. I was like, I got to, I don't know. It just inspired me. So I was like, so what can I do with that? So I ended up writing the first portion yeah. of that piece. And it, I just got into like describing like a character yeah. and like just the physical aspects of that character. Switching to like 
my teacher, Miss Deshe, she was like, you should build on that more. Like, okay, we're doing this, this like, oh, just regular, um, not regular, but old school lynching, but how can we make it more modern? Ooh. How can we give it a new age twist to it? So I was like, bet, I got you. <laughs> and, um, actually the funny thing that happened, I ended up getting pulled over my first speeding ticket. <laughs> when? Um, this was, oof. This was before you had made the poem? This was before, well, I had started the poem, but, but this is I what was, brought it home. Yeah, this is what brought it and home. I, this is what brought in, this is what brought in like powerful. the second part. I don't remember the exact month. Um, but I was like, after I was done with like my experience, it wasn't bad. I didn't have any like issues with the cop or anything. Yeah. Luckily, but it made me like, I guess, mourn for um, the people that lost their lives during like the whole initiation of the BLM movement. Yeah. And when I was thinking about all those people, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, I was like sobbing in my car and i was like oh my god what the heck is going on yeah. but i ended up writing this portion of the piece where i mentioned uh the cop's eyes and like saying that those eyes are your separation between life and death yeah so that was like probably my favorite line in that whole poem it had a whole amount great amount of significant parts in there but and it's like that's what stood out to me the most writing in myself and i can tell that based off of the poem because it's those are the lines that contain the most fear and it sounds yeah. like you were very shaken by this i was routine stopping or stopping procedure which some black people don't survive exactly and that's kind of like what went through my head when I was there because this was like literally right after all of um the protesting had occurred so mm -hmm. I'm still like getting flashbacks of like those news feeds and actually like wanting to go protest myself so I'm still like round up with emotion yeah but you know I never got to like mourn yeah. for those losses until that experience happened to me because i know they had interactions with police that weren't good exactly so it made me in a sense relate to them but also mourn for them and be able to honor their legacy does anybody ever question that like if it's weird that you feel this connection to them or because it's like you never knew them in person but you feel this connection and that that situation kind of made it really real and relatable for you um i don't believe that has ever been in question because when i talk about that situation mm -hmm. i think i just have like such raw emotion whether it be like my tone of voice or i don't know i don't know what runs through people's minds but i feel like it's just very believable yeah. like yeah why would i why would i even like counter that <laughs> like I'm, I'm just gonna listen to you <laughs> yeah so that was great that was great too so that great is a very experience. surreal moment and i feel like that's like one of those um moments that has been coined now is like afro surrealism mm. where you can like witness something that's weird but it's like only unique to you yeah. in a black experience mm. because I'm pretty sure anybody else, they don't have those fears when they get pulled over. It's kind of like, that's only something that we can convey in that moment of tension. Yeah. So I have some questions. Okay. So yeah. you said you had learned about strange fruit through Billie Holiday. Mm. Most of us, like we had got the, I was surprised because I was just like this modern day, like it's such a popular song and you know, strange fruit. It's like, once Kanye had sampled it, it was like something that was like all over mm. media. Yeah. So it was just like, wow, that was like your first introduction was learning through a documentary. And it seems like you got more of a grasp of it. 
and more of relatability from watching that. Mm. Do, as you were writing that poem, do you think there were like any specific moments of the Billie Holiday um, bio? I will, how would I say it? Biopic that you kind of like took into play or like that were strong for you? Yes. So there was two scenes particularly. Mm -hmm. um, I think one scene there was like an overlay of the song playing or, or no, 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 no. I think they were in the South and there was like magnolia trees and then there was like just a body hanging on the tree itself and that image was just like oh okay that gives me a physical reference of what the song is mentioning which the song was actually originally a poem and yeah. then um it was and then billy billy just took it from there and said let me put my little spin on it and and now it became like and now was, her poem became your poem yeah. <laughs> which is kind of like a, a I yeah, guess and it, it, it's a common topic like, yeah strange fruit is a common reference but i i'm really proud of myself for being able to put a newer take on it because like that duality of old and new is uh I think Kinda. something that has to be in in mention, yeah, in play because, you know, you won't know your forward progress without knowing where you came from. And it seems like there's no progress unless you tie it back to that, and tying it back to that kind of makes it kind of relevant. The past is all, always an example of what is possible. Yeah. So Definitely. if you want to refrain from having any parts of what was bad in previous decades you have to know what those bad things were in order to grow from them i totally agree so that is a great way of looking at it and it's a great way of pushing it forward and re-examining history and also touching on a root of identity that is how people perceive you in this country but also how you perceive yourself so touching on that poem it really is, it's a root. It's kind of like a really strong root, and I can see why it won you a gold medal and then went on to win you a bronze. Um, what was it like first getting into the program for Axel at Colgan? Oh, before that, I have to ask. So Colgan is the fine arts high school in the yeah. county. What does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean at so first? Colgan has, sure. Colgan has, uh, Various arts were from theater to creative writing, piano. I was in the band before I started creative writing, actually. I saw that. I saw that you play guitar and various percussion mm -hmm. instruments. I do. And I was, I loved band, but um, concert band was getting a little boring because, mm -hmm. like, the more you go up into um, concert band, the less percussion there is. Yeah. So I was kind of feeling a little out of place. And then towards like the end of my sophomore year, I was like, I've been like writing at home. People were saying it's good, but that's like my mom and dad. Yeah. You know? But let me let me actually take this on. Like I had the confidence. I was like, my stuff is pretty okay. Um, I want some more opinions on it. I want some more feedback. I want to see if I can really take this somewhere. Nice. So I was I made up the decision, got the courage to go and audition knowing that I could possibly risk my status at that school because I was a transfer student. Oh. I'm I was zoned for Garfield High School. Hey, shout out Garfield. That's my friend, you know, game, <laughs> game you know, what's going on, you know. Yeah, yeah. I had all my friends there, but I was like, I got to do what I love. Yeah. So. I'm glad you made that leap. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a little difficult, but I got through it. I got through it. And then after... I made that decision to audition and honestly um i think my work really like made a statement yeah because i only had poetry i didn't have any other form of creative writing i didn't have any like nonfiction. in this fiction, competition short it's, story it's the afro-american academic culturally 
hold on, culturally technological and scientific Olympics. So mm -hmm. it there's a lot of background that goes into this. There's a lot. So of to background. go that far based off poetry alone, you got to have a really strong poem. Yeah, yeah. I would I would say so. The judges, <laughs> it was all in their hands, and I just let them do what they do. <laughs> but um, yeah. Shifting back to high school. Mm -hmm. Once I got into the creative writing program, I got like the chance to build up my skills so I could like take the topics that were like already hefty that I was talking about, but put more of a artistic feel on it. By artistic feel, I mean like looking into the technicality, how you can bring out uh, what your point is, yeah. how you can uh, broaden your audience, uh, how you can make something very entertaining as well as inform masses so and, they gave an in-depth study into that like you actually yeah. received some background knowledge into how to do that in that art form yeah yeah i did which i didn't i never had before so i've, I've never even heard when <laughs> when i got because my teacher mr shay i'm gonna mention her a lot because she was really like the grounds of uh, encouragement really shout out to mrs shay have you seen this Mrs. Yeah, no, Mrs. No, Indigo, Indigo doing big things, <laughs> gonna do bigger things. He's now on an interview podcast. You heard? Go far. You heard? <laughs> I'm saying, <laughs> but um, yeah, I got to really hone my skills, hone my crafts, and really just take that far, because. One of the things also that Colgan does all the time is give students like a platform and opportunity. One of the things we have is master classes and those have people come in that are professionals in our art forms and they come and teach master classes. I'll actually be teaching one are you serious? later. Yeah. Um December four December fifteenth. Catch Indigo teaching master classes <laughs> December 14th. 15th. 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 At Colgan. Colgan High School, December 15th. <laughs> Indigo Green. Master class. What are you teaching master class in? Uh, so, one of the, my focuses is uh, narrative poetry. Yeah. So, building on more of like character building within poetry, which is generally a fiction element, but. I think one of the things that set my work apart for this competition was that I had strong character analysis. Like, I really got into my character's emotions and mm. touching on, like... They call it the pathos or something when it's, like, writing, right? Yes. Yes, I believe it is pathos. But, um, yeah... That was just a phenomenal experience to write. Really. This sounds groundbreaking. Because, <laughs> um, mm, I really enjoyed writing that piece, and then even just with the rest of my pieces in my book, uh, other pieces that are in there have more character development, like my tagged series, or well, series, but like poems yeah. that are in there, and then uh mama sang the blues mama sang the blues that is my favorite poem in that chat book because it's about maternal mortality maternal which, mortality yeah so moms that die in childbirth Ooh, i didn't know that had a name <laughs> yeah that's, i didn't know that had that name that's the that's the pro name for it but <laughs> the reason why i wrote that mm -hmm. i I really don't know, honestly. Like, I knew I wanted to talk about more, like, topics that were in the shadows. And yeah. no one really, like, talks about on a broad uh, spectrum. So, when I started writing that, it was funny because I was typing it up and then I lost, like, the whole poem. Or, what? Like, the whole ending of it, gone. I had to rewrite the whole thing. Get I was like, here. oh, my God. <laughs> Because I thought it was so great, but then I was like, okay, I guess that wasn't it. So I had it to, I had better. to, yeah, I had to like re, I had to like change my perspective. So I'm like, I don't know what I just wrote, 
but whatever I write next is probably what's gonna stick. So, <laughs> so I was like, okay, what are we gonna do with this? So I kind of like fleshed out. There's a portion that I'm talking about, like the child's relationship with their father, like yeah. kind of blaming him a little bit for like not taking care of. Because a common thing that happens is for I am not a black woman that has been pregnant, but <laughs> what I've been told from like my own like family members and stuff is that you have to really advocate for yourself because the doctors will not give you treatment unless you ask for it. Like if yeah. there's something you need, like you have to like mention that. And sometimes depending on your state, you may be like, too weak or whatever so you need like a second hand to step in and um and really like have some voice for you so i was just using that to like mention mention that how father could have done more maybe and the child themselves i really wanted to capture like how they were feeling mm. in that poem because I think one of the things that I do well is um really highlight the connection that they have because you know he's still like in the womb basically yeah and in the beginning it starts off with just like I I'm still like fighting like not having you in my life Mm. So but um like, i can i can recite a little bit of it too okay let's go one. for it let's All go right, for it so, i was ready to meet my mom i squirmed to see her face i might not have smiled yet but there would be one in its place so just building on that like that was that was a really iconic line for me because that that just showed like yo i really wanted to meet her i wanted to be i wanted yeah. her to be in my life all of this but and then it's just this tragic end. And then yeah, this tragic end. And then it's like I feel her heartbeat, but it's slower than mine, so I speed mine's up, hoping she matches time. So just like lines like that too. Ooh. So yeah, that was that was really powerful to me. That is <laughs> everything you write is <laughs> sounding pretty powerful. <laughs> um can we get a can we get a view as, as to what you're painting? Can you show the camera real quick? Since um, we are like twenty minutes in. Oh god. I do want to give them like a preview. Oh, you could just turn the whole easel around. Okay, so we got some yellow. We got, we got some orange. Some, we got some sunset. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of getting just as far with my color section. <laughs> I don't got that many colors on there either. I'm kind of going for fog and lighting at the moment. I don't um, know. I'm feeling like really bright, oh, but still like kind of like low earthy, low deep. That's okay. what that's what the orange is for. So I'm like it's like moods. fire. I'm liking these moves. Fire. I'm feeling fire. Like fire. Right now. All right. Um, so you recently also, once you had won this award, you got into GMU. So over the course of while you were graduating, this competition was still taking place, mm -hmm. I assume. Yes. So it didn't really full finish until like maybe, was it July or was yeah, it? Yeah, July, July 17th was wow. like that last end date for us. And uh, talking about like the whole Axel experience, like... Another like really profound person in my life for teaching was poet laureate Kim B. Miller. Shout out Kim B. Shout out, I feel like shout Kim out B. Kim B. B. Miller. Everybody. <laughs> Shouts out to Kim B. We got to get her on the on the podcast one day. We want to do like a speed painting video mm -hmm. with her first. We okay. got to get her on the podcast one day. Yes, you shout definitely should because I think the most the thing that stuck with me the most that she said to me was that when like i'm writing poems that i can both like recite like yeah. i can perform at an open mic but also are uh really powerful on paper just as much so when she said that if there's any opportunity you have to go out and perform your pieces when you're trying to choose what poem to write really think about like if if you have a poem that 
you're like, eh, I don't know if I should do it, but you keep getting like a feeling that you should do that one. That one isn't because like you're supposed to choose that one. That one is for someone in the audience. Ooh. That one is for someone that needs that. Look, she ain't even here. She's still dropping. <laughs> MB's not even here and she's still dropping bars, bruh. Uh, that was just paraphrasing, but still just as deep because I was like, what what that really did for me was set in like my job as an artist. Yeah. Cause there there's a certain point where the art isn't for you anymore. No, it's not. And and that's a that's a hard that's a hard pivot for an artist. Mm -hmm. And like something I have to discuss a lot with um rappers and other musicians. Yeah. Like after a certain point, it's no longer yours. And it's like art in general. Whenever you have to make something and you're done with a painting and now it's time for it to sell, or maybe you make something digitally or you put out a comic. That comic doesn't belong to you anymore. It's not going out into like um, the term zeitgeist. And now it's for the world to do with it what they will. Yeah. Once you make a song, it's done. It's for them to manipulate. It's for them to bastardize if they will or pervert. It's for them to call their own and create and build upon. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree fully because it is yours for royalty sense, but yeah. Or until you die, but yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> but but it's, it's yours for now. The the impact, the magnitude, like that is what motivates us first yeah. as artists, and then once you're there and like you're getting your work out, it's completely like into other people's perspectives. Yeah, so their outlook on your work is gonna either touch their life or maybe they're gonna hate it but that's not up to you you know it's definitely not but that doesn't mean you stop either no <laughs> because rev up do what you gotta do exactly exactly because you, you you just don't know for real you just don't know so your piece could like save somebody's life and you wouldn't even know it, it definitely so, could is it's really Art, art is one of those things like it's slept on, but it's not slept on. Yeah. Because like you have a deep appreciation for it, whether you know it or not. But you also like, oh, uh, is that a real thing? Like, like when people are like majoring in it for school and things like that, you're like, eh, what are you? What is that going to take you? But in all honesty, it does more than any other career would do for you. Because yeah. it gives you a platform to influence so many people, to touch so many lives. That's what Nothing is. else does that. Talk on the culture. <laughs> Talk on it. Speak on it. <laughs> Tell Nothing them you else dropping does that. gems right now. Indigo dropping gems right now. You know, I got my jewelry on. <laughs> <laughs> my jewelry on. Let's say it. Let's get it. Oh, God. I am with that. Yeah. What, is, what was the... What was the competition like on the Princeton County level? Because I know you had to first win that gold medal okay. in order to go into the NAACP part of the competition. <laughs> so what was that like? What was the at home, I would say, competition like? I would say that was really personal because for me, I wasn't thinking about who I'm going against or anything like that. I was thinking of this is my first time going into any competition with my work. I I've been told my stuff is good and I'm I'm solid on that. I think my stuff is good. Mm -hmm. But this is my first chance to have any type of platform to get critiques from people that are professionals in art and um to reach like audiences, people my age, people a little bit older than me, people that need education. Like Ooh. that's 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 that was something that was <laughs> yeah doing that like putting that perspective into mind i was like whoa i have a lot more like this is a much bigger thing than yeah. i originally thought it was so but also at the same time i didn't really that didn't really scare me what it did more is made me take that responsibility Ooh, okay so it, i guess i got like a lot of maturity from that we speaking of accountability we, we speaking of growth that's, that's what i'm saying because i think it, it really showed me just how important art was so 
And then also, like like I said, with Kimby Miller instilling that advice in me, also just helped push that along because, yeah, really just defining what an artist is, is what that first competition was for me. And then the national competition was just solidifying that. Because, yeah, like that first... Yeah. That first competition, I was just like, "Oh, do I have all my papers together? Do, do <laughs> I do I did you have, have to, all my bio together?" <laughs> did you have to cite it each time, or was it like they were just reading and then passing along, or did you have to go up there and like? Okay, cite so it? actually, um, mine was in a room, and it had I want to say maybe five black women. Yeah. And they all looked over my piece, had my bio in front of them, and everything. So they just read it and while you stood there or something? Well, I what I did was talked about like the different elements of the poem. So like the emotions, the uh technicality of it, um really just getting into the nitty gritty yeah. of what was in the poem. And they asked me they were like, Do you want to read it for us? And I was like, Oh yeah, of course. Like, <laughs> so you got a chance to like, like speak it in the tone that exactly, you wanted to exactly, exactly. Because I competed in poetry written, so all they really had to do was look over the piece itself. But any, I was gonna take any opportunity I could get to like really advance that piece because I know on paper, yeah, sound you know, it's, it's that, but you know, it doesn't have the same magnitude. It doesn't have the same like emotional impact yeah. that you want to get in a poem and get out to audiences so that that's what i view uh reciting as so i read the piece to them and honestly it was just like silent for a little bit <laughs> that's nerve-wracking and and then they didn't really have any questions for me, which both like awesome. made me happy, but also made me like, I didn't really know what to think, really. <laughs> so I was like, is, th is that a good thing? Um, Is there anything that needs to be fixed? You're waiting for just, a critique. It was just, just like, I'm nope, writing for perfect. a critique, for real. They're just like, nope. nope and, <laughs> and they were really just asking me like, to build on more of that, of what was inside the poem. Like why, really my purpose, like why I wrote that poem. So I guess they were looking for your comprehension. Yeah, yeah, they were looking for the comprehension. And looking for your emotional depth, I guess. Yeah, really just how I'm in there, how I'm in the poem. Like mm. what, what in the poem fits with me. So what was it like once you got that gold medal? Like what was the feeling? <laughs> Honestly, what did you do that night? Like, what was <laughs> on your mind? I don't recall. <laughs> you don't recall at all. It's I don't I don't. Well, I, I I remember what it was like being there. Yeah. Um, once I was over with the audition, and I was just sitting in the seat, kind of fidgeting, cause I'm just anxious, but in a good way. Like, I I'm confident that I did okay, but let's see what what happens you know because it's not in my hands but yeah then i was like actually one of the judges came up to me after and was like you did a really great job and i was like oh god <laughs> i was like uh oh <laughs> what does that mean now in is hindsight that, is that e for effort in, in <laughs> like, hindsight what is that? that was really great <laughs> yeah because I ended up getting gold, obviously. But just just sitting there, being there, I was just like, really just trying to take it all in. And I think that's why I I have recollection, I guess, of what after. But we just went to celebrate, probably just ate dinner, you know. <laughs> I, I didn't really do anything too big because I was really just taking it all in. I'm probably how nonchalant. You are. You're just too nonchalant. <laughs> what is this confidence? Where do you get this confidence from? Is it a parent? Like, what, what what instilled this confidence in you to even go? You said because you kept mentioning it's like confidence is confidence, and you've been like, I had the confidence to do the award. I had the confidence to do poetry, just as things. And it was just like mm -hmm. it seems like confidence was key to a lot of this. Where do you get this confidence from? 
That's, that's, that's a huge question because, like, I don't know. I've kind of always been that way. I've kind of always been, like, self-assured. Mm-hmm. And I've always known, like... Are your parents self-assured type people? I would say so, yeah. Especially my dad. Like, my dad, he knows who he is. Yeah. And he sticks to himself. And I love that about him. And I guess I have a little bit of that in me, like... That's what it is. But I, I still, like, leave myself room for growth as well because I know I am still human. I'm still going to learn things. I'm still going to grow. Definitely. So, but I think one of those, one of the characteristics that I have that really just mm -hmm. keeps that is that I have that awareness of myself that I'm going to just do what I do and whatever happens, happens. And I'm going to move on to the next thing. If it doesn't go well and if it goes well, I'm going to turn up. And I'm going to take that in and I'm going to move on to the next thing because that's just, that's just my work ethic for real. It's just, I don't know. It's just that, that is a great work. That is a great work ethic that will get you through a lot in life. Just, Let me tell you, a lot of people take a long time to figure it out. They don't figure that out into their forties. <laughs> Let me just tell you. Um, so moving on to the NAACP award, mm -hmm. did they, did you have to travel anywhere? in order to participate in this competition or was it just like sent off and then you just kind of got like the email or the call like you had won that prize um well when you win gold locally yeah that was already saying like they already told us like yo you're gonna be going to atlantic city oh so you went to atlantic city i did nice. i did we stayed in the tropicana hotel okay which was crazy because <laughs> was it like my first oh my god my first day not not to not to rack on the Tropicana. It was fine. But when I went there, it was like a whole big convention and there was also the regular NAACP convention that was gonna happen too. So they were loaded. I understand that. A lot of things on top of each other. A lot of things went <laughs> went interesting my first day there. So um room key didn't work. I I'm not like afraid of that. Well, when I was little, I was I was like really afraid of elevators. Yeah. You're out of that, but like I still have like the motion a little bit of the sickness there. part of it yeah so so i would i came off the elevator i'm on like the eighth floor or something like that but mm -hmm. it's like one of the higher floors or 18th excuse me and and i get off the elevator and i can like still feel myself going up and I'm down down and this is like the day before the competition the day before my audition part of it so i'm just like oh god there's so many oh, nerve-wracking things yeah, about this. Yeah, like, there's so many things that are, like, trying to, like, get me off guard. But I was just, like... It's, is a calm state of mind, like, really important when it comes to poetry sections or competitions? <sighs> um, I would say yes. Because, really, your attitude walking into that room mm. is what's going to matter. Because a lot of it is just discussion. Like, when I was talking to the judges, they had already, like, seen my work done everything but they wanted to know more about me and my ties to it that my ties to like the pieces and this is like a job interview yeah honestly, on, your, on your work <laughs> honestly a bit but also what i loved about one of the judges that i had i do not remember his name and i'm sad that i don't <laughs> but um Cause I would shout out all of my judges if I remembered, but um, they were really cool people. Shout out to the random judges at the NAACP. I'm Awards saying, in whoever did poetry written, you did your job. Cause there was uh one of the judges who actually countered the other judges, cause the other judges were saying like how powerful my piece was and something yeah. else, and he was like, yeah, it is, but and. And it's, I didn't let that really throw me off guard. I was just listening to him, really. Because yeah. I was like, how am I going to highlight both of their points? Like, really mm. pay attention to all the judges and what they all said. How do I feed them together? But how do I also, like, a little bit combat what he said? Because he was talking about the future like growth like yeah we're talking about change but what does progress mean 
how do we advance people? Because I mean, everyone, that's the every that is, yeah. that is, they are they are the advancement of colored people. people. So that, that is <laughs> that is in their so, in their name. So yeah, and the theme for that was um, boldness. Boldness was one boldness? of the, yeah. Um, I forgot the exact phrase, but. The one that stood out to me was the boldness because that's not a word that's usually like put to artists until yes. like they put the work out you know until you see something that's there yeah but th these are um these are all kids that yeah we won locally but now we're in the national now stage. we're in the national stage exactly 400 different like, high schools like lapita nawango was there lapita no wait what yes okay so we got yes. lapita we got Napita at the NAACP, <laughs> Indigo Green, and, and, and Napita at the NAACP, you know. Napita, you, you, you guys know. She on every single Vogue magazine, every single Gucci magazine. Shoot, Black Panther. Black about Panther. About to come out November come, 11th. About to come out November 11th. <laughs> Nap Napita's back. Napita was there. Um, Yeah, this is nerve-wracking. Yeah. This is super so, nerve-wracking. If I see Napita, yeah, I'm nerve-wracked. <laughs> so... I didn't even know until she got on the stage, but I was just like, "Get out of here! Get out of like here!" Like this, this is gonna be a huge thing. That's that's what I knew. So when he was talking about that boldness, how we can elevate people, you know, um, one of the things I remember mentioning is that people are on all different levels of understanding when it comes to black history or any history whatsoever so sometimes it's an enigma exactly exactly so what i was like is like he was like when do we get from conversation and get to action Ooh. and one of the things i had to emphasize was that you have to really meet people at where they are in order to get them to a higher level because no one's going to understand something that's coming from someone who's so far ahead of them yeah and there's like i believe there's always like a middle ground to knowledge there's always a middle ground like it's just common knowledge yeah. but when you're talking about race matters and um other like significant history matters according to like my piece because it is based off a of strange fruit that that was just a topic that like you have to introduce it slowly you do have to have some conversations and take that time because when you have expertise one of the hardest things to do is dumb something down precisely That's so why I, I always enjoyed einstein mm -hmm. because like um his quality was dumbing things down mm -hmm. it was never about trying to sound super smart it was always about dumbing things down and i think a big reason for that is because people care when you have that level of expertise you have to have care for it just as much as you would love it at the high level you have to have as much care for it at its base level as well Ooh. because that's how you're going to get more people to understand the concept that you're trying to share as well as really making it easy for them to catch on and have their own growth because that's that's the whole point is educating masses getting more people to understand something mm. so once you have a more profound understanding once like more people have a more profound understanding you have a lot more room to make those solutions and also another thing that advances progress is having multiple voices a big thing a big concept is intersectionality yeah people having a lot of different aspects of their character being put into positions of power and authority is really important because they're gonna have a lot more perspective but when you have like more of a minority you listen to people that aren't like you because you know how it feels 
to not be a main voice, to not be a majority. So that's also like a really big thing that I had to emphasize as well, because black people alone, we can have our progress yeah. in our spaces, but you won't have national progress unless there's multiple races, not in this country, because America's a melting pot of so many different people. Exactly. And I think that's what makes it beautiful. It's so what also makes it chaotic. It does. But everyone has that ability to understand we're humans. That's what we that's what we can do. We have yeah, brains. We can, for a reason. We can we can exactly. have that, that ability. You just have to make it personal, really. Because people care about what applies to them. People are selfish. Yeah. And that's okay. To some degree. But <laughs> but what really um makes a lasting stand is Precisely. being able to really look at different perspectives because that's what's going to make any solution more clear really i totally agree um it seems like you learned a lot about the multi-facets of i would guess i would say race issues and it's a really important topic that a lot of people look into and it has great importance because you go to other countries it's not something they deal with because they have more homogenous communities and more homogenous populations mm -hmm. So they don't have to understand these type of things. And what really we kind of do as like a country, which nobody really touches on, is we teach people how to get past differences. Yeah. And I would say get along. <laughs> it sounds very peaceful, but it teaches us how to tolerate, respect, and I guess embrace other cultures. Yeah. Because most people, they'll go to a different country when they're used to one way of living. They'll get culture shock and they'll totally reject it just based on that feeling alone. And it will make them kind of despise something that's not theirs. Yeah. So this level of appreciation and giving our voice to something is definitely like that stepping stone that's needed. Yes. And I, I think agree. I think that's basically <laughs> what you were saying. Yeah. Definitely. Was there anything that was like really powerful that you did learn through this whole entire, I would say, journey? Journey. Oof. That's a really hefty question, but I love it. It's beautiful. Um, really understanding my place, mm. not only in the world, but just as an artist. Because mm. all of everything that we just discussed, like, it's really like the basis of building new things like precisely you have to understand like your position in change and that's something that you don't think about because you you can yeah, highlight don't see it you can think about like how change is occurring yeah on the surface level how it's impacting other people but people but don't apply themselves to, to the change exactly and, and that's what that's exactly that's that's what i learned that see that is that's very powerful because like most people they think like they're insignificant to the status or the structure of society mm -hmm. they don't see their own social cog as part of the machine that kind of like moves this thing yeah. and most people consider like industry everything that's happening politically from the white house they consider like oh it doesn't affect me or i don't affect it mm -hmm. but no everything in this ripple in this pond it we all ripple we all have that ability to make like that one percent to that to that little drop mm -hmm. but that drop can literally fraction out into like a hundred thousand people easily yeah and that hundred thousand people can easily fracture out into like three million exactly just one post if you ever see anybody go viral on twitter like yeah. it's usually just that <laughs> that's how interconnected yeah. we all are and media does that it does that a lot it does that i have um two important questions for you okay um I've had fun talking to you, so now I just want to give these two important questions. Being Indigo Green, what do you want people to know about you when they hear <laughs> your name or, or when they talk of you? What do you want them to know about you? 
when you hear the name Indigo Green, mm-hmm. I want you to think about your position. What is it? Your position in your life. Your position. Because my art, everything that I've made, yeah, my whole point of what I want people, thank you. What I want people to understand is that they aren't alone in this world. Ooh. This my name when it's on platforms, it's not only representing me, it's representing everyone my ancestry is representing mm. other black people. I have a lot of like motivation. Yeah. There's a lot of like motivators in why I do yeah. all of my art. So I want people to think about what they can impact, what they can change. Cause everyone has that ability, but you have to tap into it you know no you one have to tap into no it. one is going to do it for you like these opportunities that i got people had faith in me but when it came down to writing my bios writing the poems promoting myself really all of that was for me i had to do that i had to hustle so if you want to make any type of change that like i want my name to influence change in your life Oof. well dang okay that's powerful and to go green two colors and, and then go green two colors for a reason that is that's that's magnificent and it really gives people hope when they realize that they have a part to play because a lot of us feel small so doing something that doing something like that will make people feel big and everybody's big everybody's big um next question anything. for you <laughs> it's um how do you see yourself in the metaverse if you were to create yourself in the metaverse oh, what would you create yourself as Ooh, i know i would definitely have a fedora on you have a fedora yeah yeah i love fedoras oh. on <laughs> okay oh god and then i would always have a journal on me and a pen and a pen and I a, gotta be. A, I gotta be a poet in the metaverse. Okay. And a point nine lead pencil. Pencil. Point nine. Yeah. Not a point. Se- I'm a point seven type person. But okay. point nine. Why point nine? If that nine? works for you, that works for you. You said I gotta write. Point big. nine is fine. That's why it rhymes. Okay. <laughs> okay. I get it. But well, um, also, you- just like, uh, I like. I love how my handwriting flows with it. So nice. And. That's a huge thing. I'm kind of old school in the fact that I like to handwrite my poetry. Mm-hmm. I don't generally type things until I have kind of a basis of what I want to write. Yeah. Or like usually I'll start a piece in my journal, but then I'll take it on to uh probably like Google Docs, really. And just go from there but nice a lot of my groundwork a lot of really the meaning yeah of my poem like my what i my outline i guess because when i'm writing it i don't think about like oh i should put a metaphor here yeah. or oh maybe i should rhyme like this no i don't think about all that all the only thing i think about is first of all my title yeah because i do come up with titles on the first hand because it kind of gives me the energy of the rest of the poem and then what's the first line i'm putting on here that's all that really matters to me when i first write a poem and then and then you just go from there and then i just go from there because you you get the feeling you're like what is the main word i'm trying to bring out from this and then you just start going Mm -hmm. that's because the title of my chat book stare pigmentation yeah it's just perspectives of black people and that's and you say it's fully published and it's ready to go. It's fully published, ready to go. Um, there's a link in my Insta bio, as well as uh, it's on Barnes and Noble website. Ooh, you got the Barnes and Noble website, and and it is on Amazon as well. And it's on Amazon. So yeah, um, really, that that chat book. The name of it was originally like a poem that I submitted to get into the creative writing program. Yeah. 
but i thought it was like a really catchy title so i was like i like the magnitude that this holds like how can i make this deeper because like after i finished writing like the poem itself stereo pigmentation i was like i want to make a whole collection and i ended up doing that <laughs> that's all and you're just recently graduated high school already has yeah. a book published indigo green Yo. Thank you for talking with us today. Is there anybody you want to shout out? Is there anything you want to shout out? Anything that's popping that you're about to start doing? Uh, besides teaching the master class on December 15th? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so. At, hmm? at Freedom High School? Colgan High School. At Colgan, Colgan High School. High school. Like, <laughs> <laughs> See, I, yeah, you're I funny, you're funny, you're funny. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, it's all okay. good. But um, for shout outs, first of all, God because that's where my talent came from, you know? It's just instilled in me from birth, so. From dad. Mom, dad, God, everybody. Okay. All them. <laughs> but um, my teachers as well, uh, Mr. Shea, Kimby Miller, Dr. Bicey. Woo! I didn't Shut mention Dr. Bicey, but Dr. Bicey was my business teacher my freshman year, and I... I don't know how that built. Like, I didn't really, I only had her one year, but I just kept going back to her class because she was just a great person to talk to. She was very encouraging. Um, probably her and Dr. Um, Mr. Shea and Dr. Bicey are the best teachers at Colgan High School, and I will fight anybody on it. <laughs> they deserve a raise. Throw hands. Something. Um, yeah, and then... As far as what I'm working on next, mm -hmm. other than the master class, I will be featuring, or well, I will be a featured poet in Kimby Miller's open mic. That will be on December 19th. December 19th, Kimby Miller's open mic for all poets. And lastly, I wanna start writing another book Focusing on narrative poetry. Um, I think you should do it on the art of narrative poetry. You seem like you have a <laughs> fact. I don't think there's enough. I never even heard of this beforehand. Is there a lot of like books out on how to do narrative poetry, or is it is just like a teaching? I actually don't know. Like I'm, hey, look into I'm that. in the research process of like defining what narrative poetry is, but also like uh, talking about like book character building, character development within poetry. It mm -hmm. gives it a whole another like storytelling element. Makes it more convincing and informative so blending the two uh i think is just very beautiful you know what? And you might be in schools one day publish <laughs> publishing schools one day and i ain't gonna sleep on you we ain't sleeping we might have to get you to sign this before you <laughs> don't need an autograph y'all can come y'all can come pick one of these up and it goes in one of these magazines Art school. shoot i'll sign it <laughs> i sign it. everything oh bet let's get it you find me i'll sign it i always got a pen on me We're gonna indigo signature. All right, hold on. Let me finish this S real quick. Go ahead, go ahead. Do it on the. Do it on All the, right, I got you. Right where, where you want it? Right here. Right. Painting with friends. First signature from a major poet and and all around artist. Indigo Green. You're seeing it live. How do you spell your name? Vaz. V A Z E. Oh, it's to me? Okay. It's to me now. Practice in your city? Okay. He's totally ready. <laughs> All right. Let's show him what you got. Let's close out and show him what you got. What do you have on your painting? Oh, like, what did you make? Which camera? <laughs> it, that camera? Everybody, everybody see it. Yeah. Reason why I did this. Because of what we talked about, about what I want you to know from seeing my name. Two colors. Two colors. But it's three colors. <laughs> but it's three colors. It's three colors, but it's two colors. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, man. I think we did the same. I did a, I did a red, yellow, green. And then you did an orange, yellow, green. Yeah, so there you go. And we both censored on the same amount of color spectrums. It's cool. Um, thank you so much for coming and talking to us. Yeah, of course. Once again, NAACP Award winner, bronze medal, Indigo Green. 
came down to sit with us on Painting with Friends. Um, tune in tomorrow as we interview Victor Ingrie and stop by the OSA and pick up an issue of the Arts News Magazine. This is our most recent issue. Stop by, grab a piece, see what you like about it. This has been another episode of Painting with Friends. As usual, I'm Vaz Hayes. See you next, or see you tomorrow, actually. It's tomorrow, 4.30. <laughs> All right, we're closing out. <laughs>